Hail and hello everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Yes, 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 yes. Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Thanks for tuning in today. On whatever day it is that you're catching this, hopefully you're catching it the day that it premieres Thursday mornings. Um, as you can tell by my uh, appearance, I am not in my uh, genuine getup as I normally am. I uh, went out for dinner tonight with, um, it, it was my father, father's in law. I guess that's a possessive turn, right? It's his birthday. You can't say father in laws because there's not multiple laws, it's, it's my father's in law birthday <laughs> um so happy birthday ronnie love you uh, of course by the time this airs it's the day after but i'm i'm recording this now coming back late at night from uh having dinner and i you know didn't want to uh change or whatever so this is what you see is what you got and um so yeah um probably not going to be a terribly long episode today which might be beneficial for the algorithms for the all this kind of stuff. I don't know. I've been noticing um, less engagement on the, the podcasts uh, as of late. And I don't know if that's just because of YouTube or the, 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 the Spotify platforms and the others, but um, I don't know. It is what it is. Um, I like to get the engagement during the, during the premieres, especially here on YouTube. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll take a poll. I might take a poll. If you guys uh, check out the YouTube channel and see if uh, if I need to start uploading these at a different time, so that way you can catch them when they're live, like when they premiere live. Um, I'm up for that. I'm up for considering that. So we shall see. Um, but today's episode is going to be uh, focused on a topic of discussion that came in as a answer to a question that I posted um, earlier in the day. I didn't get it out to Twitter or YouTube, but I did post it on Facebook and Instagram, just asking, what should we ramble on about today? Um, and it's going to be from uh, my good friend and brother, J.M. Olifson. And you guys should be familiar with him by now, as much as I've featured him on the podcast and, and talked about his work. And uh, we have a dedicated playlist on the YouTube channel, the Midgard Musings YouTube channel, to uh, his drumming and uh, shamanic, uh, ritual drums, rattles, things like that. Kind of, it's like a music little playlist or whatever, but it's, it's all his handmade, uh, items that are used in, uh, songs or, or, or drumming meditation mainly. I wouldn't really call it a song. It's more like drumming meditation. So, um, check that out. It's, it's, it's a playlist on the Midgard Musings YouTube, uh, channel. And so he's the, uh, the responder that we're going to be basing today's podcast this week's episode on uh, but before we do get started as as we've started to reintroduce the tradition of burning incense this one is going to be the uh mugwort we're going to do mugwort today so let's get that man pajama going hope you're all doing well i appreciate all of you uh all your kindness all of your support 
Yeah. There we go. It's still kind of off in the distance there. Smells good. Speaking of incense, um, my wife was going through a bunch of her things today. And she's got a lot of incense, a lot of different aromas. And I have acquired a bunch of ones that she had gotten over the years or, or recently, I guess. And, and she's like, oh, I don't really prefer these. I just got them because they were, you know, there was a good deal going. They were on sale. So I got like some, what do I got? I got pine. I got cedar. More clove. Uh, this, the kind of stuff that I like. So we're going to have plenty of incense to burn for, for quite some time. And um you, you know get a chance to enjoy all that so um shout out to my wife as well for being thoughtful and and sharing in the spoils of um esoteric shopping sprees that we she or we have gone on so um like i said today's uh episode i did i, I kind of just reached out to people made a post on facebook and uh instagram to ask you know what do you guys want to hear us ramble on about today and uh, the topic that we're going to talk about is the concepts of the inner and outer. Um, JM's uh, response to the question of what we should ramble on about, I'm just going to read his response verbatim, is the rings or levels of Inangar and Utengar. And if you're not familiar with those terms, we'll get into, the, we'll get into that in a minute in a minute but uh it says the talk about the ring slash levels of Inangard and Utengard tribe life as a community dynamic versus the dynamic of greater or larger community he says i see a lot of young folk or those newer to this path and way of life confused and getting hurt feelings or believing uh oh sorry he says a uh, way of life uh Oh, confused and getting hurt, feeling or believing kinship is a given or expected based uh, solely on the one thing known to be shared or in common, that being um, Norse paganism. So I get where he's coming from, um, and, I know, and I know what he's talking about, and I've actually had a rather similar thing kind of take place. I talked about this a little bit last week, as a matter of fact, in terms of defining barriers, maintaining the sovereignty of hearth amongst tribe and all that sort of thing. And it's interesting that that's the response that JM gives because I've, I've since last week have had uh, conversations with not just JM, but um, others in, of, 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 of a trusted uh, status in my, in, in my life to just, you know, talk through things like this, you know, when, when you get into sharing time and space and energy and, you know, whether it be ritual or whether it be, you know, just anything, just sharing time with people, uh, sometimes the, the barriers that you had set at one time, you know, what you talk about, what you don't talk about, those lines kind of get muddled a bit and the lines aren't quite, aren't quite so defined uh, the more you get to know some people and, and, and lines get crossed and, and, and there, there's an important thing I think to be reminded of is, uh, you know, maintaining sovereignty of things that should be sovereign, for instance, the hearth, the home, people's lives in, in the home and, uh, and, and other things as well. So what, to what uh, JM's response was about the, um, the various rings or levels, as he puts it, of the Inengar and Utengar concept. Uh, now, so for a lot of people that are listening to this podcast and that have been following me for any length of time and have been heathen or pagan for any length of time, the concept of the of the inner yard and the outer yard, uh, especially in the like Germanic heathen approach to things, uh, is should be a very familiar idea. Um, the words themselves aren't exceptionally old that I can recall, but and I don't even think they're found in any of the primary sources. But the meaning behind it, what the, the, the sense behind them all is, you know, Inengard, Inengard, Utengard, Utengard uh, is the inner and outer yards. And what is within the yard is, uh, it, it's, 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 it's sacred. There, there's, a, there's a degree of sacredness that exists within the yard because, again, it's that sovereign separation of what is 
outside of the yard. What is without is outside of our control. Um, and it does not have our ruling and what is within does. And so, but you know, the, the, the levels, the rings, what is Inangard? Who are those that fall within your Inangard? Are there different levels of Inangard? And I think I understand what, you know, JM is, is talking about and referring to. So we're going to kind of dive a little bit into that today. So some of the things that I think we should be reminded of is whenever we um, talk about tribe, kindreds, um, the terms kind of get, uh, I guess, used in a way that would suggest that they're one and the same. A tribe is just a kindred, a kindred is just a tribe, yada, yada, yada. And while I understand that, and I've, I've come to realize they are a bit different. So like a kindred is, 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 is the, there's a lot of familial connotations that kin, right? Kin is family, kindred. It's like a family unit. It's very churchy in a way. It, it, the, the structure, I guess, could be, could be the, uh, resembling that of, of what a church organization or church structure or church family might have, you know, where there are um, many people that assemble, that, that, that believe in the same thing, that go to the same thing, that do the same thing or very similar things and have a commonality and have a kinship tie to one another. And that their group, their kindred, as it were, is, is based largely and, and grossly on familial um, bonds, right? And I think that when you start getting into, um, when you start getting into that, then there has to be um, checks and balances set in place. There has to be things that one is to be um, worth on to decide or to determine, are they worthy of this title? Are they, are they worthy of being kind of allowed into that, you know, inner yard? Um, and that's it. It's like, it's you're either in the kindred or you're without the kindred. And, and, and that's the line. That's the layer. That's the barrier. There's, there's, you're either in or you're out. Um, so, and then I think with, when you come to like tribe, tribe is like multiple, uh, kindreds, multiple clans, multiple family units within a community. You know, or within a, a society, as it were, that it's, it's you know you've got a tribe that is made up of multiple families, and just because this family is friends with that family doesn't mean that you know. Let's say we got you know Joe and and and, and Todd and, and and Craig. You know, just because Joe and Todd's family are kin to each other doesn't necessarily mean that Craig is a part of that group or that that kinship, as it were. But they are still part of that tribe, right? They are still members of the tribe as it were so they, they they there's there's an there's an added layer or an added ring um to that dynamic to that group dynamic so what we see a lot of times happening with uh the pagans uh that that, that come into norse heathenry is this and, and it's probably mostly due to christian baggage that they bring from a previous religion or, or another religion, maybe not just Christianity, but I want to use Christianity as the, as the main one, because that's the, that's the one that a lot of folks come from into, into paganism is, uh, is this, you know, underlying feeling that well, just because we all believe in the same gods and goddesses that we are now inherently brethren, we are kin, we are family now. And that's not really the case, not in the societal structure of, 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 of tribal heathenry, right? Just because we all believe in Odin or Thor and Freya and Freya and, you know, Frigg and, and the other gods or minor, lesser or, or major gods of, of Germanic uh, mythology and, the, and, the, and those pantheons, you know, just because we have that commonality does not make us kin. It doesn't make us family. It doesn't make us brethren. doesn't have, we are, you know, and, and just because of that, it, it does not mean that I am uh, obligated to show you any sort of um, grand gestures of, of 
love hospitality or anything like that. Um, and so what, what I think JM is referring to is, is how younger heathens, you know, the newbie heathens, folks that are coming into this thing kind of fresh, coming into it with that mindset, coming into it thinking that, well, I believe in Odin, I believe in Thor, you know, I, you know, I, I sacrifice to the Vatir, I do this, I do that, you know, um, I have runes, I wear a hammer, right? Um, just because those commonalities exist that that all of a sudden makes you part of the family, you know? Um, and you get hurt when stuff like that happens, because if there are, you know, groups out there that, you um, are, are a bit too open with their uh, placing of, of familial bonds on people. If there, if there aren't enough checks and balances, if it's not guarded closely and, and protected, you know, guarded and protected, I think are, are the words that I'm, I'm thinking of here. If they're not, if it's not done in that sort of way, then you run the risk of tainting and, and damaging and spoiling uh, the well you know, the, 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 the collective area where luck and all that settles into. Um, and I've seen this, uh, I've, I've, I've experienced stuff like this even um, recently where, again, like when, when, when you have families who have, you know, started and based their tribal growth off of close familial bonds, you know, like we, you know, the, the, the founding members of a of a tribe or of a this or of a kindred of whatever you want to call it is, is, is they are, they are considered brothers amongst themselves, brothers, sisters. They have familial bonds because of things that they've done. They have worth themselves to each other to the degree that they consider themselves kin. They may not be blood. Uh, so maybe it's more of like of a kith thing where you're, you know, adopted or, or worthed or oathed into that familial title or into that, you know, familial place. But with those, with those things comes a lot of responsibility, you know, and, and if you're, if you're too open with that, and if you just kind of be like, oh yeah, you know, you've, you've know, read the Havamal and you, you know, all this kind of stuff about the gods, you know, you know, all these things about the gods, you've read X, Y, Z sagas, you know, you, you've done all this academic work, whatever, oh, you, you're, you know, your brother to me now. Um, you run the risk of, of, of getting hurt and, and, this also is, is, is a bit rampant with regards to the like online heathenry, online community. There's a false sense and there has been a false sense of kinship that um, uh, exists in a lot of these Facebook groups and, and things where people are always just tossing out the, the name, you know, brother, sister, this and that. Um, and uh, I get called you know, I get, I get called, uh, you know, brother a lot by people who I don't consider my brother. And it's, I know it's out of, you know, respect. I know it's out of um, adoration. I know it's out of, it's all in good intent. You know, like there's all, there's, there's good, and it doesn't hurt my feelings to be called that. Um, just don't expect me to reciprocate in that way. Um, because I don't know you like that. And we don't, we haven't gotten down like that, man. Like we haven't done things enough with each other for, for, for it for us to be uh or for me to consider you worthy of that title it's nothing against you personally it's just that we haven't done those things enough to 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 warrant it right so um the layers the layers the rings the inning guard newton guard inning guard newton guard is inner yard outer yard it's it, it's con it's conceptual uh, and it's very prominent in um uh, heathen worldviews um, where what is within is sacred and what is without is wild. It is uncontrollable. It's chaotic. Um, and there's, there's distance in Utengard outside of the yard, outside of the circle, you know, outside of your inner circle that the further you get away from it, you know, the worse it gets, the, 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 the more, um, dangerous it, be, it becomes. And, and, and I've, uh, I, I've compared it to, you know, you, you can be friends with somebody, you can, they can be close to you, they can be, um, you know, good people, you know, acquaintances, friends, whatever, uh, but they're not inner, they're not in guard, you wouldn't drop what you're doing uh, on a dime to go help them, you know, if the, if the phone rings in the middle of the night, you're not going to answer it, 
um, if they send you a, a message on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and they, and they ask you a question, you know, you might wait to the next day you know, to respond or whatever. Whereas, whereas with those that are within, you know, and, and in your inner yard and in, in guard that that's going to, those are the, those are the types of people that you would be much more inclined to shift and pivot to help them when they need it or answer their questions or respond to their messages, you know, more timely, uh, as soon as you see them. Um, and then going back into like the outer uh, yard of the outer area, you know, there, there, there's those that are so far outside of that outer yard that are not even your friends. They, they have done things to betray trust and betray and break frith. Um, and they have in turn become beyond what's outer and they have become a uh, neath. They have become an outlaw. They are, they are, you know, you, you see them, you, you know, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire sort of thing. You know, so there's those layers, there's those layers of what is without, and there's also those layers that are within to, to kind of come back to that, you know, just because you're within that inner yard doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to know and should know everything about that person's yard. Um, I, I said before, you know, I've, I've, I've had that experience myself where the, the foundation of, of my tribe was, was built and has been built so strongly on kinship ties and, 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 and f familial type things that, you know, you overshare and sometimes you, you get to knowing too much about a person. And even though they are your kin, even though you love them as, as, as though they were your blood, um, there are, you know, there's, you got to be careful with that because it can, it can definitely impact the growth of a tribe as it, as it were, as it were, because again, the tribe is not only what is within that one person's hut, that one person's family, that one person's roof tree. And the roof tree might have, you know, a, a canopy that, that, that branches and extends out beyond just the immediate um, hut or the immediate home. Um, like, like for us, you know, like my roof tree is, is myself, my wife and, and her parents, you know, but my, my, the canopy extends beyond that a bit into, you know, some of my tribesmen um, right now. So, but not all, <laughs> not all of them. Um, and not to the same degree. So, and as the tribe grows and as things become more and more established um, and, 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 and organically builds out from where it has started, um, it is very important to maintain that approach, I feel, because again, if you, if you just get to know a bit too much about everybody in their home life and, their, and it, 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 it taints the, the sovereignty of, of the hearth. So, for those that are, you know, newbie heathens that, that are coming into this and, and feeling as though they are, you know, family to people, um, be very careful, first of all, with going around and, and just calling people titles of kinship. You know, just because you join a Facebook group, just because you join a Discord server, just because you become part of some sort of online forum where there are other folks that say, you know, hail the gods and wear hammers and, and can, can say a few things from the Hove Mall in Old Norse or whatever, whatever commonalities that you have, just because that exists and just because that's there does not entitle them to any titles of kinship, nor does it entitle you to be referred to as a, in, you know, in, in, in titles of kinship. It doesn't. Um, now, you know, some people might, you know, kind of uh look at this and go well oh you know hold on a minute you know because we're we're all we're all brothers and we're all kin under the same you know like animism you know like we're all brothers of the earth we're all we're all children of the earth you know and i get that um in the sense that you know we all kind of have that primal connection to the land and 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 how we connect with the spirits around us, the, 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 the Vatir, the whites that share space with us in the profane. Um, but what, you know, what I'm specifically talking about is, you know, societal structure, the, the way that we grow as, as heathens at, on the, at the grassroots level. Um, you know, just because, you know, we got two arms and two legs and, you know, love the sagas and, and read the Havamal again, all that stuff does not 
entitle anybody to a title of, of, of that kinship. So, uh, you know, for those that are new, going into your heathenry and going into your, your pagan journeys, um, it's not to say that, you know, I, I you know, and again, it's one of those things where I sit back and I go, well, I'm not the, the one to tell you how to heathen. Look, if, if you feel comfortable with calling somebody that or, or, or they're calling you that and you want to reciprocate, that's up to you, man. Like that's your hall, your call. It's your life. You do what you want to do. And I always say, you know, your hall, your call, not my hall, not my call. That is not a original quote by myself. That is a 100% Eric Shervin, the word weaver over at the Ravens call. That is 100% his um we call it mantra, I guess. That's his phrase. So, but it means it, 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 it's, it's everything about that is, is it's, it's simple. It's to the point, but it means exactly what it says. It's, you know, not my, not my prom, not my dance, not my hall, not my call, you know, not my potatoes, not my gravy. I don't know, getting a little bit silly with it, <laughs> but the, the point is, is if, if it's, that's what you want to do, then boo-boo, you do you the same time take it from somebody who's not the oldest person you know not, I, I'm, I'm not the leading authority on anything i'm not a you know also pope type I'm, I'm not the you know person to tell you how to heathen how you want to heathen or tell you how to pagan how you want to pagan but i'm somebody who's done something for enough length of the time that i that i've got and am getting more experience and i have a valid thing to say about this and if 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 i've seen ex, you know and if i've experienced things in a certain way then i want to share that and i want to um what's the word i'm looking for uh, expound on this and i want to edify as the word i was looking for i want to edify you and take what i say and and just try it out and see right okay well i'm going to go back into this facebook group tomorrow and instead of saying hail and good morning brothers and sisters of midgard you know, maybe not. Maybe I have a different view on things now. Maybe I have a different approach on things. Maybe I have a, a clearer view on things. Because again, once you start opening yourself up to this, I'm your brother, you're my sister, let's all be one big happy pagan family kind of thing. There's this ex, there's this sense of entitlement. There's an almost an expectation that's being set. And you go, well, I can't believe that, you know, they unfriended me. I can't believe they said this about this. Or I can't believe they believe you know, this particular way, they were my brother, they're my, no, they weren't, you know, not unless they've, they've done enough and, and worth themselves through it. You know, I'll, I'll just, you know, go out here and, and use examples. I've known, um, well, let's, let's, let's go back to, you know, kind of where I started with my, my heathenry. I've known my, my tribal brothers for, probably the biggest part of six going on seven years but we didn't just start calling each other brother off the rip you know what i mean like we had to know i think i i the first time i started calling dingo brother was was probably a good year or more into our friendship you know what i mean and it wasn't even heathenry that brought us together it was it was the local music scene he you know he played in a band i was at a show i dug his stuff you know, we started talking about that, found commonalities uh, with, with the kinds of music that we like, the kind of culture that we got into, you know, and then and the next thing you know, it's, oh, I see he's wearing a hammer and he noticed I was wearing mine. And, you know, we start talking about runes and the, the lore and, and the gods and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, the more we became friends, we established that first we were friends. And then the more we hung out and the more we started actually engaging in things of worth with each other, you know, being there at, with each other, at each other's side, partaking in ritual together, um, helping each other out, you know, um, in, in various ways, things that worth e e ourselves to each other, um, to comfortably start calling each other brother. And it was a thing that we earned amongst ourselves, you know, I think we've even talked about this when he's been on this podcast before about how, you know, that, 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 title of kinship didn't just come right off of the rip now let's compare the same thing where I, I talk about him and have talked about him on almost every podcast eric shervin right eric is 
another heathen who I've uh, learned a lot from and who I've been, who I've known and have had contact with now for as long as I've been doing this, 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 this uh, Midgard Musings thing, not the, not the podcast alone, but Midgard Musings as a brand, as a whole, when I started this, you know, I've, I've known Eric since then. So that's in what now, four, four or five years going on close to something like that. We've never met in person. Um, we've had a lot of good, long conversations. I have his number. He has mine. You know, um, we don't overshare with each other on things, but I know that I can talk to him about the stuff that I have questions about because he has experience where I don't. And he, in turn, meets me at a level where he is comfortable with sharing certain things with me, not sharing perhaps tribal business, which is which would be out of place for him to do so. His tribe, Pridgar, is his business and not mine. Um, and we are not brothers. You know what I mean? We are not, we are, we have not tied oaths of, or, 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 or tied weird in any way. We have not made any sort of kinship ties. Um, we've not met in person. We've talked over the phone a lot. Um, chatted over you know social media and and he've even collaborated on videos he's been on Midgard Musings before he hasn't necessarily been on the podcast he's been on like some of these AMA type things that I've done on the on the Midgard Musings YouTube channel um, but you know so but we, we we share a lot of of common things and 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 yet out of all in all the years that we've known each other I would not feel comfortable calling him brother nor he nor nor what would he feel comfortable calling me his brother that I know and it's no disrespect to each other but we know who we are to each other we are friends that is that that much I can say we are we are we are friends um and I uh, have gone so far as to say we're good friends you know um and and the, though the miles are are what they are you know he's in Texas I'm in Tennessee um we've established enough of a of a bond, as it were, over the distance, over the ways that we've been able to communicate, we've established enough of a bond that we can comfortably say that we are friends of each other and that we like the cuts of each other's jib and, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but we're not brothers. And, and, you know, somebody, though, somebody who, you know, maybe let's you know let's say they 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 just they have a, a meaningful conversation with somebody they're a new he and then they, they talk to somebody who's got you know years of experience under their belt and they find what that person says to be of great value you know and they put that value that you know that they they find that person to be so valuable that they they just are are stricken with with so much adoration that they they put that title on them. thank you so much brother brother it means so much Thanks a lot, brother. And again, I get this a lot from different people who I don't reciprocate in that way. And it's no slight to them. There's no, you know, I don't feel disrespected. It doesn't hurt my feelings. This isn't, this is, this never is intended to be like, hey guys, by the way, stop doing that. Like, no, it's fine. Like it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Um, but at the same time, don't, don't, don't get upset or don't think it's strange if I don't be like, yeah, yeah, appreciate you too, brother. Right. You know, um, I don't know, like I, I've just, I've done enough of this for enough of a length of time where that's something that means a lot to me. If I'm going to call you brother, I'm going to mean it. And it's going to be because we have done something of worth together. You have worthed yourself to me that you are worthy of that title. And, you know, if I accept the fact that you call that to me, then it is I feel honored because I feel that you have been deemed it that I've been worthy to be called that. I have worth myself to you. So we we talk a bit about um, in heathenry the, this gifting exchange, the gifting cycle, reciprocation. It's not an uncommon theme in in many other cultures, not just you know paganism, but the gifting exchange, the the exchange is uh, of, of of weird. The, the exchange of luck, the exchange of gifts, the exchange of things, you know, not physical things per se, not material things, but time, energy, um, whatever, just, you know, the, 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 the constant exchange that, that, that takes place, 
that can be a powerful thing that can re- that can really set a very powerful tone and depending on the things that you're exchanging with with somebody um that can that can really uh put, put like i say you know set that worth with them or with you um so as you go into this like for all these new new heathens maybe even for those that have been around for a little while and just haven't really thought about this doing their heathen stuff or doing their pagan stuff right maybe perhaps think about it now and realize you know how much am i putting into this uh you know, how much worth is left in such a sacred thing and such, a, you know, it could just be, oh, it's a simple name, right? It's just a title. Oh, it's okay, man. I call everybody brother. It's no big deal. Well, should it be? Shouldn't it be? I mean, like, shouldn't it be a big deal? Shouldn't you be calling somebody who means the world to you, your brother, rather than just every Tom, Dick and Harry that walks across your path, you know, brother, sister, whatever you, you know, whatever title of family that you want to use, it should mean something. It should carry weight, and it does for me, you know. So, the rings, the layers, Inengard, Utengard, you know, you will have a group, you will have an inner circle of people who you are entrusted to and who trust you. And then you're going to have people outside of that that are cool, they're all right, you know no harm, no foul. They, they haven't done you any wrong. And, and so far as you know, they, they're pretty cool cats, but they are not part of your inner uh, circle. They're part of maybe the tribe, you know, maybe another part of a part of another family that's, you know, yeah, they're pretty cool. I like the way they do things over there. They, they keep a nice house. They cook good food. They are well-mannered, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, but they're not a part of your inner circle. They're part of your tribe. They're just not a part of that inner garden you know, and then you've got the layer that, that goes beyond that outside of that. It's not, it's not in guard. It's not tribe. It's, it's outside. It's, you know, that's a, that's a stranger. That's a traveler that I don't know. And that's probably one of the other things too, that I think gets maybe lost or, or mixed up in this is that, you know, people that come into heathenry, they, they look at things like the nine noble virtues, right? I've talked a bit about this. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've gone down that road talked about you know one of the nine noble virtues is is, is i think it's it's uh, hospitality right and they think that in order to be a good pagan in order to live up to the nine noble virtues you have to be hospitable and for some reason being hospitable means that you open up your home to any and everybody that may need it doesn't matter if you know them um if they're a stranger along the way you know because they, they read through the hava mall and, and then they see oh you know hospita- hospitality is 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 a, is a dominating theme especially in the first, you know, section of the Hav Mall, the first however many dozen stanzas, it's, it's almost all about hospitality and being a good guest and how to be a good host and what to look for and this and that, right? I mean, times are different now, man. There's, there's absolutely no way that I would, in my good conscience, open up my home to just anybody and everybody that needs it. Get a message on some rando from Facebook and going, hey, man, I'm traveling through. Could you give me your address? I need a place to stay. Uh, I don't know you. And just because you wear a hammer and I think you're cool and you got, you know, you know, whatever, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's, I give you a few hotels around there that I'd recommend, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you need a ride. There's, there's Uber, you know, Lyft, whatever. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drop what I'm doing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put my, my inner guard, my inner hearth, my home, my roof tree at risk for just a you know just just some average person just some random person that you know has a has a has a thor's hammer on their profile picture or says you know hey hello and this or that um the whole thing for me and this is something that i've i've said it for the long time for a long time but i've i've really gotten to a point where i, I live it and i feel it is that you know hearth above all the 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 the, the tribe and all that is 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 great you know, and, that, and that's something to work towards, but best have your, your hearth life in order, have your home in order, be super protective, be, be the, be the one that, that, that guards and, and safeguards and protects your home and your roof tree, you know, and that means, you know, from everybody and anybody, keep that, keep that, keep it sovereign, because it is, 
and and the only person that has the right to run your show and run your hall is is you um and and again you know there there is no you you are not entitled to have a home opened up to you by somebody else just because you share a common belief a seemingly common belief you know um now i have had uh people open up their homes to me who i didn't know very well hey man you're coming through you've always got a place to stay here man you've always got a roof over your head thank you i appreciate that it's very kind it's a kind gesture but you don't know me you don't know me and i don't know you so you know first of all what are you how are you protecting your hearth by letting someone like me who you know granted i may appear a certain way i may you know be very genuine in in the way that i am but you don't really know me you haven't taken the time to know me and i haven't definitely taken the time to know you so how are you protecting your heart by letting someone you barely know into the sovereignty and the sanctuary of your home you know how how what, what kind of a good steward are you what kind of a good protector are you to do such a thing and then what kind of person would I be just to, you know, walk into somebody's home that I've never been in? I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what, you know, what I'm walking into. Part of what the Hava Mall says too, you know, that the guests should look both ways when you're coming in because you don't never know where there's going to be an attack. You never know when something's going to come out and get you, whatever, right? So it's kind of a, it's not an exact quote, but that's the theme of it. That's the spirit behind it, you know? Um now, you know, for those that have opened up their homes to me and my wife and who we have in return opened our homes to, it has been done because there has been enough knowledge and, 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 and character challenge shared worth, as it were, between us that we know that where we're going is a wholesome place and 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 the people who have opened up their homes know enough of us to know that that we are wholesome or i am wholesome enough to be worthy to be counted as uh, you know as as guests within the the sanctuary of their home times are you know it's it, it's a lot different now guys than it was in you know the the viking age and the iron age and of scandinavia and all these things where you know you just had random people coming and going and you know they they, they didn't have hotels they didn't have inns at every turn and every corner you know you know and you might be going a whole day's journey before you even saw a town and you needed a place to lay your head some shelter and you had a hut that you came across and it was just some you know nomadic person or just some random person not living in the in the hearth in the heath the heathens as they were right you know i like that anymore man so some of that type stuff right i think I think that's a good thing to, to be reminded of and, and to be uh, vigilant of, you know, no, understand the layers just because just because you have people that are a part of your tribe doesn't mean that they are all in the guard, right? Tribe is tribe. Hearth is hearth and hearth is sovereign. Not everybody in your tribe, not everybody in the tribe should have the, you know, eyes into the home, as it were, or, or be a part of the, the sanctuary of your roof tree. And outside of that roof tree and outside of the in and guard, you still have your tribe. You still have people that will be there at your back. You'll still have people that will, you know, come to your aid if you need it. Um, so there you go. There's my kind of little rundown breakdown, as it were. What's a rundown? Hey, Jim, where's the rundown? Yeah, about that rundown. Uh, what's a rundown? It's an office reference, the office reference, um, in case you hadn't noticed. But yeah, so there you guys go. Um, that's the topic of today's, this week's discussion. Um, next week, I think we're going to take another, had another, uh, had another suggestion pop up from another, 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 another. Where is it? Yeah, somebody else um, on the on the Facebook uh, questions uh, was was wanting to know establishing a kindred, rambling on talking about establishing a kindred. So let's let's talk about that next week on the next Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Um, as always, thank you to my uh, chieftain and chiefess patrons. It, it'll be Janet King, Jeffrey Wright, and M. Darby. Um, 
believe that is uh was it well whoever you are it's all of you m darby uh, uh adam i think it is and uh all of it all of them it's not just the chieftain and chief test the chieftain chief test uh uh patrons have gotten their um trying to keep track of all my perks all of the perks that you guys are a part of but uh you, you guys got your your rune draws for the month rune pulls for the month um but yes all the all the patrons on patreon my my yarls and and chieftain uh patrons on patreon huge shout out to you thank you for your uh ongoing and monthly support and if you are listening and watching the random heathens rambling podcast and you're wanting to random heathen ramblings podcast and you're wanting to get um part of that picture too you want to become a patron on patreon click the link tree link that's annotated either in the show notes of this podcast or the description of the video um all the links are there the patreon links the youtube channel the the ways that you follow me on on facebook twitter instagram all of that fun stuff check it out oh merchandise too i hardly ever talk about merchandise that's there um so yeah check it out see what fits you appreciate you guys tuning in today if you do like this please upvote it engage in any sort of way that the uh you know platform allows you to youtube folks please like the video share it comment in the description area um and everybody else spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, wherever share it around upvote it engage with the algorithms so that way they know that this stuff is engaging and fun for people so once again thank you all so much for tuning into this week's episode i'll look forward to hearing from you uh, and seeing you guys next week and until then may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors always smile upon you <laughs>